Thank you so very much for the word today. Thank you so much, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you're going to help us to understand how to move forward in the things that you have for us. And we are so blessed by that that you have shown us so far. Now, Lord, we want to now function in all that you are showing us. In the name of Jesus, henceforth now and forever, amen, amen. and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right. So. Last week, I started on this whole understanding of this the, the resurrection. I, I, I really got to the death, actually, more than anything else, understanding the suffering. And now, understanding the resurrection, we also, we've come to the point that we understand some things about that and the difference between the Sadducees and the Pharisees and that the Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection and the Pharisees did. Um, um, we, we also understood that there was a difference. Sheena, I think I sent you um, a chart, a, 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 um, a, a calendar. Okay, um, I need you to bring that up for me. So we talked to you also about the fact that Good Friday probably was a misnomer and that is no such thing as a Good Friday. Um, that, that the Bible de definitely says through Jesus our Lord, he says the only sign I'm going to give you is the sign of Noah. And that sign was three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. It was interesting too because I was <laughs> after last week we had our dinner and my 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 co-pastor, my co-pastor, may not be your co-pastor, but my co-pastor, Charity Pittman, <laughs> um, says she was back there fact checking me <laughs> to make sure I wasn't making any mistakes or anything because she didn't want me to look bad. And um, so we still had a, 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 a semi-debate um, about it because, by the way, this chart is on the app. Is that right? Yeah. So this chart is already on, this chart right here is already on the app that I told you to download this morning. It's already there under documents. Um, and so you can look right at it there. Um, and But what happens is, um, every year, every year what would happen is, Passover would be on the same day because it was Nisan 14. And God told them to do that every year on that date. Remember? When they came out of Egypt, he says, this is the day that you will celebrate the Passover. So every year was on the 14th of Nisan. Um, and, um, and so the, so here, this whole preparation day and getting ready for this is important because it is here that Jesus have his last supper. Okay? So that last supper is called what is called um is is not just a, a was not just to say he want to have a meal. He was having the Passover meal. All right? Are uh, y'all y'all with me? Um and so that is a whole whole thing. That that whole ceremony happens on this night which is really amazing but I don't have time to go back through that and I'm not going to get caught but the next day is a high Sabbath and that's what I wanted you to talk up to see because this is the start of the unleavened bread this is the start of the feast of the unleavened bread and it is a high Sabbath the weekly Sabbath is called a low Sabbath and so you trying to you have to figure out which Sabbath they're talking about when you read the Gospels. And the first Sabbath they are talking about is this one. It couldn't have been talking about this one, okay? Because okay, because this is after after six o'clock here. It is actually Sunday, right? right? You you know that, right? So after the weekly Sabbath, this is Sabbath, and after six o'clock, you're into Sunday. And so Jesus could get, could have gotten up anywhere from here to early morning, but the Bible says he got up when the sun was coming up. Okay? All right. So he got up on that Sunday morning, but it could have been Saturday night, it would have been Sunday anyway. But he got up early Sunday morning where the sun was up. And so it it appears to us, again, that you now can get your you can get, if he dies here, one, two, three days. Yeah. And one, two, three nights. Okay? You can only get it that way. You got it? So it's, 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 you can't get it from here. You can't get it from the 17th. You can't get it from Good Friday. 
And so for years and years and years, we've been celebrating something. And you should have gone and checked it out on Google. And I told you to check it out. Where did it come from? But I can tell you that. And you may not even think about it anymore. But you should go and check it out. Where all that come from? And again, that's why Charity was back there fact checking me. So I wanted you to have that. Are, are you y'all with me? Okay. All right. So again, this chart is on the app. It's on the app. So check that out. Really important. So I don't want to stay here too long. So go to with go to um, Mark sixteen. Jesus help me. Go to Mark sixteen. You can take that down, Sheena. Thank you so much. Mark sixteen. And if you go here, this is really powerful stuff because what we're trying to figure out is this whole power that's in this resurrection and understanding it and him getting up. This is really, really important. And then it says, and when the Sabbath was passed. Now see this. When the Sabbath was passed, what Sabbath is he talking about? Uh-huh. <laughs> Come on. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and, and Solomon had brought sweet spices. Which Sabbath are they talking about? Huh? The low Sabbath. Could not be talking about the high Sabbath. It's got to be talking about the low Sabbath right there. Okay? Because they came to the tomb when he's already in the tomb. So you got to be talking about the low Sabbath. That's that Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening thing. Okay? Y'all with me? All right, good, good, good. That they might come and anoint him. And and early, I mean, very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher um, at the rising of the sun. See that? And they said among themselves, who shall roll away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And he says, and when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in long white garment, and they were frightened. And he says unto them, be not, a, be not a frightened. He says, ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, my goodness, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where he laid him. So this is where he, this is, this is the place, but he's not here. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he goes before them into Galilee. There shall ye see him as he said unto you. And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulcher for they trembled and were amazed. I would have been too. Neither said they anything to any man for they were afraid. Now, when Jesus was risen early that day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and weep. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, could y'all see those two words? Come on, somebody see those two words? Believed not. <laughs> After that, he appeared in um, appeared in another form to two of them as they walked and went into the country, and they went and told it unto the, re- the, the residue. Neither believe believe they them. They ain't believe nobody. Come on. So their faith is, well now, and, and the thing that's interesting is Jesus have told them this over and over and over. You got to understand, it says uh, to read Philippi, when Peter gets in trouble, come on, Jesus clearly tells him that he had to be crucified and we would, would be raised on the third day. He tells him clearly, but they're not listening to that. Because again, you got to think about this for a moment, because we're going somewhere, it's pretty serious. You got to think about this for a moment now. This had never happened. Okay, other than Jesus doing it with Lazarus. But there was no Jesus standing outside of Jesus' tomb to do it for him. But Jesus was outside of Lazarus' tomb calling him forth after 40 days. But there's nobody outside of this tomb, and it's none of them. So never have a man or anybody got up on their own. There had to be somebody that helped call them forth 
into and out of death into life. Yes, yes. But there was nobody here to do that for them. So naturally and clearly, come on, ain't no way he got up. Because you can't get up on your own. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. sir. Everybody with me? Yeah, okay, now this so 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 come on. To, we get ready to go somewhere. Believe me. Hold on. Hold on. So they don't believe. And and again, we, we can read back over it and look back at it, but we probably wouldn't believe it either. <laughs> We'd probably be in the same boat with them. He says, and after that he appeared in another form. Let's go to you know these are in Mayor's Road, right? Okay, and they were they were they were blown away. And and then in verse thirteen he says, and they went and told it to them to the residue. Neither believe neither believe them. They he says afterward he appeared unto the eleven. Now Jesus now appears unto him himself as they sat at me. Okay, <laughs> and then and, and immediately what does he do? He rebuked them for their what? Unbelief. He rebuked them for their unbelief. He rebuked them for their unbelief because they are totally unbelieving. He says, and what? Hardness of heart. Because why? Why did he do that? Because they what? Believe, Believe not them which had seen him after he was risen. Okay, now, so he rebukes them. Now, he's up, right? Now, guys, this is a place that I really need you to, to come to as the body of Christ when you're dealing with the resurrection. You have to deal with the resurrection from the perspective and from the place that the resurrection allowed us in. That's true. Yeah. Did you hear what I just told you? Yes. Okay, the resurrection allowed us in. Because before this time, there is no way for us to get in. Okay, you with me? Because Jesus clearly said he did not come for us. Who did he come for? Come on, lost sheep of Israel. He said, I didn't come for you. I came for the lost sheep of Israel. And so who did he go to? He went to Israel. The only one time we find him in Samaria. Okay. All right. They believe, but he's not, he can't stand Samaria. Matter of fact, when he said, I would go away and you cannot come, and the Jews said, where would he go? Is he going unto the, un the unbelievers? Is he going amongst the heathens? Because we can't go amongst them. Are you with me? So Jesus said, I came for those who God has set apart from the beginning. It is a resurrection that gets us in. Now, let me say this to you as well. Everything that we find that Jesus says after the resurrection is key for our advancing the ecclesia. In order to advance the ecclesia, you got to know what he told you to do after he gets up. Because there is no ecclesia while he's alive. I'm letting the stuff sink a little bit. There is no called out ones. There is no ecclesia at all. He's the only one here. Remember, he said, "If my, if my if 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 um, my kingdom was from here, my subjects would fight." Remember that, okay? So he's not; he don't have any subjects here. He's the only one. But when he gets up, now he ushers in the new day. Right. Matter of fact, we can go back to eighth day re understanding. The eighth day understanding is this resurrection helps us to understand that this is the day the Lord has made. What day is this? The eighth day. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice. And we will be glad, where? In this new day that God has made. Now, again, I'm telling you, because at this very moment, We've got a problem on the earth. At this moment, the kingdom has come. Do you hear me? At the moment he gets up, kingdom here. At the moment he gets up, we've got problems because we've got two kingdoms in the, in the same place. There are two kingdoms now in the same place. 
Okay, which is why we went around last week and I was like so blessed. Again, I'm just so blessed by all of the, the different islands in the house. Glory to God. And there were two I ain't even get to. <laughs> the men who were Republican was here, all that. I ain't get to them. So, so, but all these islands in the house, so they understood. And again, if you're from an island, you should really understand real well what Jesus did. Because you should understand occupation. You should understand somebody conquering your land and making you them. Is that, is that making any sense? So by being a part of that, you're supposed to have that mentality that bring that mentality over into the kingdom reality of the world. That the, the same thing that happened to our island is the same thing that Jesus has done to the earth. Yeah. Yeah. And he sent me to be the representation of heaven to these people that are on the earth so they'll know how to be heaven. Yeah. Yeah. They'll know how to be a part of our kingdom yeah. and not a part of their old kingdom. Yeah. Please, sir. And now I'm here to occupy it until the king shows up. Yes. 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 But I'm the I'm the one that's a part of his ecclesia. I'm a part of that king's ecclesia because remember the king would send his ecclesia to a conquered land and say now make them us. So the ecclesia has to do with that. Again, you you this the the reason why the trapping of the local house is a problem is because it doesn't get you to do that. It doesn't make you think about conquering lands. Which is why the first century church didn't think about building a building. They didn't want to build no buildings because they didn't want to set down. They didn't want to be confined to no place because they want they had to move out throughout the earth. What did what did Jesus tell them? Go into where? All the world. He said Jerusalem first, Judea, Samaria, other most parts. So you got to go everywhere and you don't have time to be showing up at a local church, a building every week. Yeah. 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 Which is again the problem. And so we can bring you into a, into a building now, but if we don't take that build, that, this gathering to now make you who you're supposed to be when you leave out of here. Yes. 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 Then we've messed up. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So when we say at the end of our service, and we've had it for years, mm. what do we say? Depart to serve. Yeah. Because see, you came here to celebrate. Mm-hmm. You came here to celebrate, get further instruction, but now you're departing yes, to now serve the king in the influence area and in your domain. Yeah. Yeah. You're supposed to be looking for every opportunity to now express and and move the, the kingdom into your domain. Your domain. You're supposed to be overseeing everything. Mm-hmm. Is that making any sense? Yes. Are you tracking with me? Yes. So where are you gonna start? I gotta start in my neighborhood first. Amen. You see? I'm gonna start in my neighborhood, I'm gonna start in my family. What's the, and, and I said on Thursday, as, as we connect all this stuff, I said to them, look, you, I hope you saw it. I don't know if you did or not, but bless you. But, but Thursday, I said to them, listen, you got to ask God, what is the plan for the neighborhood? Yeah. Is there a strategy for your neighborhood? Yes. If it's so, I need it. Yeah. Why? Because I am, my steps are ordered Amen. of the Lord. Hello. Yeah. You ponder your way, but God orders your steps. Yeah. And so now if, I, if I'm ordered here, if this is where I'm supposed to live, what's the strategy? Give me the strategy for my block first. You don't have to give me the whole community because I may not be able to handle that. But what's, what's the strategy for this block? What is block? Amen. How, do, how, do I, how do I bring the people on this block to another level of understanding? Well, first, I know I've got to at least be praying for them. Yeah, man. Come on, somebody. Yes, I got at least. If, I got at least be praying for them, at least. Yeah. And and try not to keep that general, but specific to them. 
Yes. Calling their names out before God. Right. If they don't have their name, their address, it works. That's right. That's right. And that's displayed for me every time I every time I pass by the house. Yeah. Are we getting this? Yes. Are y'all y'all getting this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you got to make sure what you got to figure out what is he telling you to do? Because now what you're about to hear is <laughs> what you're about to hear. These are the instructions to the ecclesia. Listen now, this is the instructions to the ecclesia to now go and occupy or to go take this territory. Amen. Here are the instructions. Look in your Bible and read. What's the next verse? Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's pretty, that's pretty good instructions. When last time you went and preached. I ain't nobody helping me. When the last time you went to preach. You don't have to. Why? You have a preacher. You, you, you come to hear preaching you don't go to preach now I'm not talking about that you got to stand up on the corner because I know y'all ain't doing that but let me tell you one of the most refreshing things that I have ever had to do and that is open air preaching yeah. oh God we stood on college campus yes at A and T and 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 um, UNCG and Virginia and stood up in open air. Don't need we don't need no permits and just start preaching. Y'all ain't helping me. Oh my God! And before long, you got a crowd. That's right. You do. A lot of fun. Yeah. Descending, see, it ain't good church people at, at the open air. <laughs> they they yelling back at you. They want to tell you what they think. You better be able to handle it. They shut you right down. But you don't need to go there because you work amongst people. And you got an opportunity. To break the word open to those people that's around you. Because you can see what's going on in their life. And God will open up a door for you to preach. As you go preach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And do what? Keep preaching. Keep Keep reading. He that believeth and is baptized. Wait a minute, he that believeth and what? Baptized. Wait a minute, we baptized some folk last week, didn't we? Yes. We put them in the water. Wait in the water. Okay, come on. What do we do? Come on, come on. Shall be saved. They shall be saved. But he that shall be damned. Oh, they that don't believe, they're gonna be damned. Keep reading. Wait a minute. What's gonna happen? Gonna There's going to be some signs? Yes. And what, what are these signs going to do? What signs? <laughs> oh, women, these signs follow who? So stop. I want you to think about it for a second. Why are no signs following us? Because the signs are following somebody. Yes. It's following who? Believers. Believers. Wait a minute, time out now. Wait a minute, wait a minute. If I ask you to raise your hand if you believe, you're going to raise your hand. Yeah, I'm a believer. I ain't want to sing this song. I'm a believer. Mary, Mary, right? Verses and all that, right? Okay, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. You say, yeah, I'm a believer. I say, okay, show me your signs. Show me your signs. 
He said, I ain't got no signs. Then I can question if you believe. <laughs> Why don't you have any signs? Because you come to a building. And all your signs happen in here. You ain't coming, you're not going out there believing that God is sending you anywhere. The, 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 the first part was to go and do what? Teach and preach the gospel. So if you're not going, why you need any signs to follow? You ain't going, you're not going anywhere. What's following you? Signs, follow me over there to the building. <laughs> No, the signs are going to follow you to work. Yes, right. That's right. But you got to get up to go to work like you're going to advance the ecclesia, not going to work. Oh, I'm preaching better than you responding to me. I'm way ahead of you. I'm not going to no job. I'm going to advance the ecclesia. While I'm at this place, I'm going to do this work that is assigned me, and I'm going to get paid for it. But I'm here to advance the ecclesia. Because there's somebody that's coming today that need a word from heaven. And I'm the word that I get word from heaven. Somebody here got a problem in their household and they can't get free. I am your answer to your freedom in your house. Come on somebody. Come on somebody. When I find out that you got a problem in your life, yeah. I say, okay, look, let me, let me do this. Hey, hey, um, let's go to lunch. Let's go to lunch. Oh, yeah, we can go to, where you going? I, I, I'm paying. Mm -hmm. Everybody that, everybody going to lunch when you pay. <laughs> you really don't have to worry about if they're going to go with you if you're paying. If you, if you say, I got the bill, somebody ready to go to lunch. <laughs> And then I'm going to say you to, to you this way. Where you like to go? So now that tells you right there that you need to have some slush fun. <laughs> Ain't nobody going to help me up in here. I'm trying to get some help. I'm trying to get an ecclesia moving, man. You're going to need a slush fund so that if they say, I want to go to Longhorns, you ain't got McDonald's money. That's right. Come on, is that making any sense? No, I don't want, I, if I ain't got nothing but McDonald's money, I can't take you to Longhorns. But if the person say, I want to go to Outback, come on, let's get a little blooming onion here. Hey, mate, let's go. We're going to go get us an onion. Why? Because I want to talk to you. Because before we get back to work, your life going to change. Amen. Everything that you need is going to happen for you. It's going to be the best lunch you ever had. You didn't have to pay for it. But God's going to bless you. Yes. Because he sent me to bless you. These signs shall follow them. So whatever I need from heaven in this moment, my confidence is I know I got what I need. Come on, somebody. I don't have to call nobody to help me. Why? Because when I brought you to this lunch, everything I needed was following me. I'm preaching way out in front of y'all. That's good. That's good. Everything I needed was following me. Why? I'm going, I'm doing what the king told me. The king told me to do this and I'm doing it and everything I need. Yes. What's going on in your house? Demons are destroying my house. They ain't gonna say it that way. But I better hear it that way. Yeah. Having problems in my marriage, I'm having problems with my children. Demons are destroying your house. Yes. And God has sent me to you today while we eat this lunch yes. to remove out of your house yes. the influence of hell. Yes. Right. Good, so everything about your house is about to change. change. Yes. Yes, yes. Sir. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Watch this statement. You believe it or not. Oh, wait. Woo! I don't need your belief in this. I don't need your belief in this. 
There is nothing about this you got to believe. It would help if you believe me. But no, I have the authority to now remove this out of your life because you brought it to me. You didn't hear me. Because you released it to me, gave me authority into it. Did you hear what I'm saying? Now, I can't just go into Annette's life and take it. I got to have her invite me in. Once she invite me in, I don't need nothing else from her. <laughs> uh, but it would help if, if what, do you believe what I'm telling you? If she can get to a place where, you know what I needed, I hope. No, no, I, I, I understand. I don't really need you to help me, but your hope is good. But do you, can you believe that I can change it from this seat right here? I can believe it. Good. Let's do it now. Amen. And the moment I can get there, but I don't need it. Because, because that app, watch. Check it out now, because after this lunch, I'm not finished with the situation. Right, right. Oh, I'm talking to somebody, y'all. I'm not finished with the situation because we had lunch and we talked about it and we prayed at lunch. I'm not finished with this thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm about to tear this thing up. This is my opportunity to my God to just now go in my closet and destroy devils and demons and to release some souls out of some things that have been keeping them bound and not for years. And it's my opportunity. Oh my God, I've been sent for this. I found one. I found something that is illegal, God, and I have the right to now remove this because I'm the governor. That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. That's right. And the authority of heaven is back in me. Yeah. That's good. That's good. It's back in me. My faith is in the fact that you're back in me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh! Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. I think we need to keep water in the pool. <laughs> Then he says this, he says, not only, he said, not only that these signs shall follow them, but I believe, he says, in my name. What are they going to do? Cast out devils. Cast out devils. Now, listen, listen to me close. Listen to me close. Do you need, do, watch this, think about this. Do you need the faith of the person that's being, the devil is being cast out of? You don't, because they can't even get to faith, can they? See, 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 when you're dealing with demonic, you don't need nobody's agreement. You you agree with heaven. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my God. He says now, he says, and not only that, they shall speak with what? Now, boy, we got somewhere to go, man. We're gonna get here. Man, I cannot leave my affirmations. I'll be on these affirmations until Jesus comes for real. Because there's a whole lot of them and I'm not going to stop doing them. But this thing is in, in interrupting and you got to have the interrupters and allow it to do so. It may be another week of this. <laughs> I'm just telling you so that I can get it all through. But watch this because there's something you need to know. And I'm going to give you a hint of it right now as we go into it. But watch this. Every. Where you from, bro? Barbados. Barbados, Barbados right? Right. Barbados, where you from? Pittsburgh. You from Pittsburgh. You ain't from no Pittsburgh. Yeah. <laughs> she said Pittsburgh, didn't you? <laughs> Guyana? Jamaica? Anybody else in the house today? That's all? Jamaica? That's it? Those are all the islands? So let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. What's your native tongue? Jamaica? Huh? Patois. English Patois. How did you, and you can speak the King's English? The Queen's English? How do you start speaking that again? Because British occupation colonization. Same thing with you, my brother? Queen's English? What is the what is the native tongue? Oh Dale. Dale. See, I love all that. <laughs> I need to learn all of these languages. Bro. I need to get all of them in, into me. Who? What was your native native tongue? Um, huh? We have a lot. You have a lot. Yeah, <laughs> so you got a whole heap of them. Yeah. But then the British came. Yeah. And what did they do? Queen's English. The Queen's English. Mm-hmm. Know what they did? 
In every situation, you know what they did? They changed the tongue. They had to change the tongue so that you would now be a part of their governmental structure and so that you would speak what they would speak and they would know what you're saying and you would know what they're saying. So they had to teach you a new tongue. And the new tongue indicates that you've been colonized or you've been conquered. That's what the new tongue says. So the language gives you away. <laughs> if we had somebody from Cuba in the place they would be speaking Spanish. New tongue. Why? Spain. Yeah. Conquered them. Yeah. And brought them Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all with me? Yeah. So every conquering nation brings with it its language. Yeah. 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 That's true. Jesus says, you're going to speak with what? I ain't nobody in the house. You're going to speak with what? New tongues. Woo! You went to the altar back in the day. Yes, sir. Shaq went there. Shaq, you went there? Yes, sir. I went there. Hallelujah. I went there. Anybody else go back? Anybody? Mother, you went to that altar? Yes, sir. Mother, did you go to that altar with me? Yes, Come on, anybody? Bro, you did you go down there? Were you down there? Were you tearing? Come on, anybody? Come on, anybody tarry at this altar? Come on, anybody? That's why you ain't tarry. Yeah. <laughs> he said he played around with <laughs> Come on, Vanessa. Did you have to tarry? You went down there. You tarried too, man. Thomas, you tarried? You tarried, man. Oh my God! You had to tear that altar. Come on. And you ain't know what you were saying. Jesus, 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 Jesus. All they want you to do is say Jesus, 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 Jesus. As fast as you can say it. Come on. The truth. Come on. And you had a mother walking behind you. <laughs> listening to you. Jesus, 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 Jesus. You ain't got it yet. Keep going. <laughs> you ain't got it yet. <laughs> I'll let you know when he get here. <laughs> you ain't got him. <laughs> the stuff that we had to do. Man, y'all, don't, y'all, y'all may not be happy about for Kenneth Hagin, but I love the fact Kenneth Hagin came. <laughs> faith, man. I need faith by grace, man. I, get up off that floor. <laughs> believe and receive. Raise your hand and believe this. <laughs> and Paul said, had you, and I have not I can't get to all of it, but Paul says, have you, have you been baptized in the Holy Ghost since believe. you believe. believed? So that means you can believe and you may not have it. Why would God give you new tongues? Why would he give you new tongues? He gave you new tongues because you have to colonize the place. I want to ask you another question. I asked my wife this question this morning. I want you to think about this. In the book of Acts, because we're going to go through some things later, but I, this is just a, a teaser into this. But in the book of Acts, it says that when they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they came out and they spoke with new tongues and other tongues and, and clothing tongues and other rinse of tongues, the Bible says that they all, that all that was there heard them speak the wonderful works of God in their language. 
Is that right? Yes. Now we know there was 120 people up there in that all, in that in that upper room, and they all get filled with the Holy Ghost. The fire of God comes on them. Kind of they're speaking in all these tongues. They come outside, and and these people said, "We all hear them speaking our language." So let me ask you something. All these people are speaking, and they said, "What we hear them speaking is the wonderful works of God." Now we hear all these speakers speaking in these these languages. Now my question to you is, um, were the people that came out of the upper room actually speaking their tongues were the people that came in from the upper room out in the out in the open were they speaking their language so that they could say we hear them speaking the, our language and the wonderful work of God were they speaking their language come on come on how many huh they were speaking. Come on. They were so. So if somebody was Spain from Spain, they were hearing Spanish. Come on, right? That's what you're hearing. Okay. If somebody was from France, they were hearing French. Right. That, that, so so as they were speaking in tongues, they or they they began to they came out of the room and they started speaking in Spanish. But they didn't know they were speaking in Spanish. Okay. Right. Okay, and they came out of the room and they were speaking in French, right? And but they didn't know they were speaking in French. But the people heard it, right? Is that right? That's what you believe, right? And that's what you've already been told, right? That's wrong. <laughs> there it is. You know what mother said? There was go those holy holes. That's wrong. That's absolutely wrong. That's absolutely wrong. Okay. We ain't let you help. We ain't let you. We have never helped you at all to understand. Because that makes sense, doesn't it? Yes. Come on, help me. Doesn't that make sense? Yes. If I hear my language, they must. They must. They must be speaking in my language. So let me help you. Let me. Let me help you. Let me help you for a minute. This matter of fact, when I help you in this, can you give an extra offering today? <laughs> Because we need, we need you. <laughs> okay, so let me ask you this. Have you ever been in a service? And somebody in the service, while the service is going on, it usually happens most of the time when the music is playing and a song has been finished. And all of a sudden, somebody in that service will go, have you ever been there? Yes. Yes. And somebody else will stand up and say, well, that says the Lord. The Lord will say unto you this day. Yes. Wait a minute. Time out, time out. Time out, time out, time out. How in the world the person going to tell me what I just said because I did not speak anything in their language. Right. But the person who's interpreting must have heard it in his language so they came outside still speaking in tongues and it was interpreted in their language within them oh you didn't hear me they did not have the chain. They, come on, are y'all with me? Yes. They didn't speak their language. They were speaking the tongues they were already speaking. And they heard it. Yes, and you know how that is the case? You can, you can prove that? Because some did not hear it. And the some who did not hear it in their language said, these men are speaking gibberish. Yes. That's right. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's right. Been there the whole time, right in front of you. Yes, he said, they drunk. They drunk. They're speaking gibberish. <laughs> Why one thing you speaking gibberish and the other one thinks speaking you speaking in their language? One heard and one didn't. Y'all, y'all hear me? Wow. Now watch. <laughs> Siggy Oblander. Siggy Oblander is a prophetess in our in our in our ministry, Fellowship of International Churches, um, South Africa for years, working with but phenomena. And we we probably in this church do for a Siggy. We 
probably do for a ciggy. You know, you know what he probably do for a ciggy? Do for it now. That girl's bad, man. And so, 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 Siggy said that she was in a meeting once, and this person began to speak in an unknown tongue. And a lady came to her and says, do you know what you were saying? She said, no, I just thought I was praising God. She said, no, you were not praising God. You were literally repenting for your sins. Wow. Wow. Because the person, y'all, you ain't hear me. The person heard her in her language. Let me give you a personal testimony. So I'm in a meeting, I'm preaching in this conference, and um, I end up the conference, and um, I'm, I, I end up the conference in prayer. I pray, it is a, I didn't, doing number with the transgressors, I'm praying, and I pray in English, my God, and then I move right into praying in tongues. I begin to pray in tongues, I just begin to pray in tongues, and I say, amen, everybody say, amen. It's a great high time. And the guy came from the back. And he came to me, he said, he said, Bishop Jackson, I said, yes, do you know what you will say? I said, yeah, I, 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 I know what I've said in English. He says, no, do you know what you said in, in tongues? I said, no. I said, I just was praying. He said, you said everything you said in English in my native tongue. I said, oh my God, I don't been there then. <laughs> I'm up in there. I'm up in there. I'm up in there, Lord. I said, where are you from, bro? You from a, a remote part of Africa? He was. I said, wow. Look at that. Because you brought language with you. In order to change your culture, you must change the language. Did you hear what I just told you? That's oh man. That's why he said you got to speak with new tongues because you have to change the culture. <laughs> if you don't change the culture, you they gonna stay who they were. By the way, we had a tremendous problem. Go to Philippians three. I got to get to another scripture. In Jesus' name. Um, <laughs> we were having tremendous problems some years ago, and it was everywhere because people were coming to this country across the border, and they were not willing to learn English. You remember? Y'all yeah, ain't going to help me. You remember? They were not trying to learn English. You cannot come into this country and bring your language and culture with you. Because you're entering into a country with a language and a culture. You have to assimilate. But they were trying to keep their own culture. With their own language. And that became a real serious problem. Are y'all hear me? Are, y'all, are you tracking? That, that's the problem. That's the problem we most have. They don't understand. That's the problem with the inner city. The inner city tries to have its own culture. And therefore, it tried to develop its own. I ain't nobody going to help me. I said it tried to develop its own language. It, come on, you can call it Ebonics. Or you can call it whatever you want to call it. But come on. You have your own language. And if you have your own language, then you have your own culture. Therefore, you cannot be a part of the culture of the whole. Yeah. <laughs> Therefore, you can't get the benefits. You see? So, they, so, so the governors that came from other countries, their whole job was to make sure that you spoke the right language. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I told you, Miles Monroe said that they used to, they would get in trouble if somebody heard them speaking the wrong thing. 
you literally could get in trouble. Can you imagine that? Get in trouble because you're speaking your own tongue? You don't have the right to speak your own tongue anymore. And because you, because us in, us, 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 us in America, we don't understand no kings. Mm. <laughs> we don't understand about no king. You don't understand presidents. You elect them. King don't get unelected. Queen don't get unelected. Queen, queen forever. Look at England. How long girlfriend been there? <laughs> she been there since Jesus got up. <laughs> she been there a long time, hasn't she? Long time. She ain't planning to go nowhere. Look like. Then she ain't trying to go nowhere. Still getting around, holding that little purse. <laughs> she got that purse now. She gonna have that purse every time. I just like to see what's in that rascal. <laughs> now I understand you've got a parliament and all that. I understand all that. You know, don't, don't 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 write me. I know. <laughs> but what but what I'm trying to let you understand because we don't understand monarchy. Right. We do things and we think we have rights yeah. that people that's under a king or or a monarch know they don't have. So if I tell you to speak this language, you're going to speak what I speak. I tell you to speak or lose your head. See, that was the problem. See, many, many of us don't understand, even with the whole situation with Bathsheba. Bathsheba could not tell David no. My <laughs> God. There was nothing she could say. Why? Because everything in the kingdom belongs to the king. Even the people. You ain't hear what I just finished telling you. If you, <laughs> if you just heard what I just finished telling you, and you call him King Jesus. Come on, Bishop. Talk about it. Talk about it. I, I ain't get no help in here. Either you call him King Jesus. Yes. yes. Everything in the kingdom belongs to the king. Even the people. That's right. That's right. So the Bible says, you are not your own. You've been bought with a price. You are not your own. That is no poetic speech. That is kingdom speech. That's economic speech. You don't belong to yourself. You don't do what you want to do. You do what I tell you. You do what I tell you just the way I tell you with no back talk. <laughs> you don't have no you don't have no opinion. So how many times should I forget this person? Seven seven times seven? I don't want to forgive him seventy times seven. Don't have nothing to do with what you want. You've been conquered. Does that make any sense? Yes. You've been conquered. <laughs> so how many people are living in their church life like they've been conquered? I ain't getting no help in here. Hello. Hello. Okay, let me. You know, I love, I love the fact you love me and that. I know I at least got one person that just love me for me. I know it. We get along like two peas in a in a pot. Ain't no more peas in there, but don't like me laughing with you. I know. <laughs> so, so. Did, did the king say, forsake not the assembly of yourself together as a man of some is? I can't hear you. Did the king say that? Yes. I can't get no help. I said, did the king say that? Yes. Did he give you an out? No. 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 
He didn't give you no out. He didn't tell you if there was a disease in the land, you didn't have to do it. He didn't tell you that. Okay, I'm just trying to figure out. Because I'm confused. If the king said it, then you are treasonous. Wow. And what happened to Daniel when he decided that he would not do what the king said? I can hear you. What happened to Messiel, Azariah, and Messiel? What happened to them when they decided that they weren't going to do what the king said? They were going in the fire furnace. So when the king said to do something and you don't do what the king said, there are some penalty for that. That's it. Oh, really? Yes. But you can do, you don't have to do what Jesus said. Oh, wow. Because Jesus, Jesus gave you wisdom. Mm -mm -mm. Preach, mother. Are y'all in Philippians 3? Yes. I, I, I'm, I'm just trying to figure stuff out. That's all. Because sometimes I'm just confused. I'm just confused. I'm, I'm just telling you, hey, listen, I understand too. I am really understanding, but I'm not the king. <laughs> I'm not the king. I don't have nothing to do with it. I got to do what he tell me too. So Paul says something, and I will end right here and pick up, hopefully, right here, the Lord willing. Paul says in chapter 3, verse 10, something. We got to get it. This right here we have to get. Pastor Lewis, we got to get this. If we get this, something going to break loose like never before. And I have something. I mean, I do love the Lord. I thank you, Jesus, for just bringing that. He just brought something back to my, room, to my mind that I just totally have forgotten. But you're going to get blessed by this today. So could you read verse 10? That, that Paul says what? That I what? May know him. May, time, time out, time out, time out, time out. Come can you buy him a real, a big Bible so that he won't be reading that little teeny winning language? Not, you know. I changed. Doing a sermon. He has a real Bible. That's a, I know that's a real Bible, but the, the print is so small. This is a dinner time conversation. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm hurting my eyes. Got on glasses. I know you got on glasses. That's why I want big print. Oh my verse ten. Son-in-law, <laughs> son I'm gonna buy you. A, I'm gonna buy you a big print, Jane. Oh my. I appreciate it. You welcome. You welcome. <laughs> you need help. I do. <laughs> Crystal has already looked into help for me. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go, go. Read. That I may him pause it, that I may know him what? Wait a minute, I want to know him how? I can't hear you. I want to know him how? Wait a minute, so that means in this resurrection is power. So I want to know him in the power of the resurrection. Keep going, please. Oh, wait a minute, time out, time out, time out, time out, time out, time out, time out. Do you remember what I told you last week about the suffering? Yeah. Yeah. How many of you praying that really? How many of you really going to read that? Yeah. That you want to be in the fellowship of that level of suffering? We, I, I, I'll skip that. <laughs> Let me just have the power of the resurrection. I don't know if I want that, that, that level of suffering. Come on, somebody. He said in the fellowship, he said, I might know him in the power of the resurrection, in the, in the fellowship of his suffering. Come on, read. And, and what now? And do who now? And being conformed. Okay, now that conformity. Now let me help you with something. Because, again, what I just finished telling you, you think, okay, God, I don't want to go to that level of suffering either. Okay, so, <laughs> because he just now clarifies it. He said, being conformed unto his death. Okay, now watch. What part of you, listen, and you should get this immediately, what part of you could go through that level of suffering and be conformed to the death of Jesus? What part? 
Huh? Come on. Carmen said three things, by the way. <laughs> the soul. The soul of man can be so assaulted. It is at this level, it is at the same level of the suffering of Christ. Amen. So that it can die. So that the new spirit and new life can come forth. Are you with me? Yes. And Paul says, I need that level of suffering for my soul so that my spirit will come alive. How many run out from beneath the suffering of the soul to protect the soul from any kind of suffering? Hello, somebody. And never see their spirit come to the resurrection power. And I will help you a little bit with this. You really do need somebody helping that soul to suffer. <laughs> and when the suffering comes, you've got to submit to it. And allow the suffering to take hold of you. And deal with everything that shows up inside of you. Every desire to fight, to get back. Everything that's inside of you that's churning. That says, I want to knock you into next week. Oh, y'all gotta help me, somebody. I want to curse you out. Y'all gotta hear me. Come on, somebody. I got a baseball bat at home. I'm going to go and break your kneecap. Come on, somebody. Come on, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. And you got to look at yourself. And you got to ask yourself, what is it in you that want to do that? And why would you want to do that? And I forbid you to do it. And watch what happened on the inside of you. As you get mad at you. And start fighting inside yourself. And go, I don't want to. I want to. Oh, you ain't going to help me. So I'm, oh, I'm preaching better than you. Responding to me. Come on. And everything about me want to do. Oh, you. Oh, I want to call your names. You're ignorant, you're stupid. Oh, come on, somebody. Why would you dare do that to me? Don't you know who I am? Don't you know what I've done? Preach it, Bishop. And who hurts you the most? The people. The vote that's closer to you and the ones you've done the most for. Come on. <laughs> Man, God got a special whooping for you with those people. Oh, he got a whooping for you right there. He used them people. Oh my God, my God. They can get on your leg. Come on, talk about him. I've been trying to find that nerve. That, that nerve is something else right there. He can get on your last nerve. Come on. But they, 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 they're the closest to you. You done done all this for them. You done gone out of your way to help them. You done done everything you can for them. And all of a sudden, they just act like they done lost their absolute mind. And do something against you that you can't even phantom in your head. And the Holy Ghost have the nerve to tell you. them <laughs> well you ain't gonna ever get to the resurrection power so Paul said this these 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 temporary issues not even worthy to be compared with the glory that shall follow. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Can't even come close. Can't even come close. Can't even come close to the glory. Is a glory coming? Is a glory coming? All I got to do is submit to the suffering. <laughs> it's hard to submit to the suffering, but I'm going to submit to the suffering. Submit to the suffering. Amen. So, this is just me, maybe, but not you. This is just me. I'm going to put this all on me. Live stream, this probably ain't you either. But after I think I didn't submit to the suffering, <laughs> y'all ain't going to help me. Help. I didn't submit it. Watch this. Maybe it's not you. This may be me just by myself. But then I start having these conversations with me. <laughs> about what is wrong with you for doing something that dumb. Why would you do that? You know they don't mean you no good. <laughs> Maybe that, is that me? Is this just, come on Bethel, 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 help me, help me. Is this just me? That ain't just me. I'm just trying to figure out, I'm, just, I'm having all this conversation, man, we having, this, man, there's like three people in the car with me. And I'm answering myself. I'm not only talking, y'all ain't gonna help me. I'm not only talking in brush shot, I'm answering myself. I'm telling myself what I was talking about. So why you do that? Because you know why you did it. But you know, I don't want to do that. Why? But, but, if, but if you didn't do it that way, you know, this is stupid to do it. Now who are you talking to? I've got to close because my wife's going to get on me because I've been up here too long. <laughs> so I'm trying to tell you that self-talk is trying to talk you out of dying. All the self-talk is to say, you don't have to go through this. I want you to ask yourself a basic question. And this basic question is this. Does Jesus have all power? Yes. That's real easy, ain't it? Yes. Now this is the next question. Does he know all things? Yes. Did he know that somebody was going to do what they did to you? Yes. <laughs> My next follow-up is this. Why didn't he stop it? Because you act as though it's something foreign that happened. And God knew nothing of it. God was caught totally by surprise that this thing happened to you this way. Yet he wasn't, was he? No. And he allowed it for your glory. So that you, so that you could come to another level. So that this resurrection power would explode on the inside of your being. Hallelujah. And now you are functioning in a way that not only will help the people that bothered you, yeah. but a generation of others. Yeah. You will have the answer for every situation yeah. and you will never, listen to me close, have to face that again. You cannot face it again once you're resurrected above it. Yes. Why? Because Jesus will never die again. Yes. Oh, you ain't going to help yes. me. Because he's resurrected from the dead. Yes. And when you're resurrected above the issue, you can never go back through that issue again. Yes. You become the answer to the issue rather than ever having to deal with the issue ever again. That's true. It's the glory of God. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. Manifested in your life. <laughs> That's right. It's the resurrection power. It's the resurrection power. Hallelujah. Now, ah, Jesus. Mm -mm -mm. Tell my bro, 
tell my wife if she needs to shut down, she can shut down. I'm about, I'm finishing. So she at least know where I am in the process. <laughs> How many closes have I had? This is the first one. You think I had two? You said a count of two? One and a half. Okay, yeah, 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 that was, okay, I'll give you that one. Don't be counting my closes, man. <laughs> So the Lord said this to me. He said, if you can get the people to have the same heart and mindset, Hatha Madan, he says, something will break free yeah. in them. Yes. Let me tell you the way that you get that done. It's by way of the spirit and it's by way of that language. Okay. It's by way of the spirit and it's by way of that language. That as you began to function in that language and you function with the same mindset in that language, something breaks free. Are you with me? So we're going to close. Live stream, we're going to close on you. We're going to bless you. We're going to ask you to go out and give and all that kind of stuff. And all that. If you're part of Bethel, um, look in your... Look in your um, your blast this week because there is an app we need you to download and the instructions will be there if you were not here today. But I, I need to take you here for a moment because I think you're going to experience something that you have not experienced yet. And God's going to bring a, a unity because something happened last week that I believe it's for this week. So live stream, we love you. Thank you so much for being with us. Have a great and wonderful, wonderful week. Hopefully see you Thursday in Jesus' name.